When John Zera didn't come home from school on a February day in 1976, the police didn't think very much of it. Teenagers were late coming home all the time. The next morning, I think my mother called the police department again, and, uh, you know, they weren't real receptive. You know, maybe stayed over at a friend's house or maybe ran away or he's mad or something. Or, um, But, you know, he wasn't like that at all. That was just atypical for him. There were all sorts of stories about kids that, that got rides from strangers and were found later safe and sound, <coughs> uh, kids who volu voluntarily took off and were found, and that always caused a, a ripple and uh, community concern, but it was always treated as this was to some extent, at least initially, as an ad hoc, unusual, one-of-a-kind event. Compared to the things that exist today, it was probably real innocent stuff, um, you know, there wasn't any of the... You didn't have to worry about going outside and getting shot or some of the um, substance things that are around today. As time went by, the police realized John probably hadn't run away. The day his body was found in Whitnall Park was the start of a mind-boggling investigation. When I started, you know, you had a 38 revolver and uh, 18 rounds of ammunition. Um, and a pair of handcuffs, and we didn't even have portable radios. We had one-channel radios in our squads. So you got out of the squad, you basically had no communication. Frankly, um, they were in over their heads. Um, the officers back then from Franklin and Hills Corners didn't have the training that officers have nowadays, did not have the scientific technology that we have available to us nowadays, didn't have the manpower that we have available nowadays. It was also the end of a more innocent time for the police and the public alike. People were worried, and, you know, rightfully so. I mean, this is so unusual. You know, everybody was concerned. You got the feeling that people really were uncomfortable talking about it, which is understandable too, but especially there, because I think it came as a shock to the community. The whole culture at that school completely changed that day forever. And we tried to, you know, get back to me what kind of seemed like normal. But when I think about it now, I mean, how could it ever be normal when, you know, for my parents, one of their children has been murdered. Um, you know, my, for my brother Phil, his older brother's gone. And, and for me, um, you know, it could, never, it could never be the same. Just trying to, you know, make things normal for me and my brother is, even though, when I look back at it now, I mean, it could never be normal again.